Hi folks, I thought in this video I would address the subject of Reiki. Now, for those of you who may not know what Reiki is, a lot of people have heard of it these days because it's becoming more popular. But for those few of you who haven't heard of it, Reiki is basically a system of laying on of hands for healing. Now, it falls under the broad umbrella term really of the New Age movements. If you go to a New Age fair, you'll find people who will be promoting this. Next to tables on paganism and wicca and witchcraft and shamanism and all that kind of stuff, you'll find someone who is promoting Reiki or you'll find literature about it. You'll find your local neo-pagans or Wiccan working with you in your place of work. Probably has been involved in it in some way or other, had some sort of contact with it or is certainly aware of it. Now, the first time I came across this practice was between 1995 and 98 when I was living in Nantwich, Cheshire and I was doing my theological degree. Uh, part time I was working in a shop but um, the boss of the shop was into this thing called Reiki. So I asked him about it, you know, I didn't know anything about it at all and he told me he was a Greek Orthodox Christian and he did go to a Greek Orthodox church at times, uh, usually for special events, weddings, funeral, that kind of thing. But um, I was quite surprised when he told me about this because I'd never heard of it. But when I started examining it a bit more closely, I was a bit disturbed, to be honest. And I'll tell you why in a moment. But this video is really for people who are flirting with the idea of Reiki, who are experimenting, wondering about it, maybe you've just started it. And I just want to make this video to give you guys an informed decision. I'm going to tell you things that you might not know about, and then it's up to you. And I'm not going to be using Christian sources here. Um, no, no, no. I'm going to be using the uh, Reiki's own literature. This manual here is from a Reiki master called Stephen James Culshaw. He's a Reiki master in, in Chester. And it's the first degree manual. Th this is what my friend had. And I just photocopied it and, and started to research it and took notes on it. And I'm going to be using some secular sources as well. Or a secular source rather. Okay. So it's basically a system of laying on of hands. That's what mo most people know it as. But it's more than that. It's really very like spiritualism. Because it has contact with spirits called Reiki guides. Now I'm going to show you some stuff in this manual here. And uh, it's on page 11. It says... Another experience often encountered is that the recipient can feel your hands are in contact with different areas of the body and it seems as if there are several people working on the healing. This can be caused by a number of reasons. Now it gives a few reasons there but it's this one here that sort of like slipped in amongst the various reasons. Divine beings called Reiki guides sometimes assist in the healing okay so you've got these Reiki guides assisting in the healing laying their hands on your body alongside the Reiki master some people are surprised by this because there's only one person in the room yet they can feel other hands on their body I think it might be useful just to show this page as well here of the process the laying on of hands there <clears throat> some more things um, this is on page 12. It says, before starting one of the Reiki sessions, this is when you're, you're actually giving the healing. Before starting, say a silent prayer for guidance and help from the Reiki guide. So it's encouraging you here to pray to these things. And it, there's no explanation as, as to what these things actually are even. Then you can end the treatments by silently thanking these guides so we're talking about guides and spirits here can you see how it's 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 like a, a form of spiritualism okay and then is this process called attunements which basically sort of changes the vibrational level of you and your aura by rewiring is the word that's used here the subtle energy channels in our finer bodies through transmission now 
it talks about a number of things that you do here, placing the Reiki symbols on the person's body and uh, the procedures performed by the Reiki master, but controlled by universal wisdom and attended and guided by astral Reiki guides. So here they are again. And it says at the bottom, this is page 17, once Reiki is activated by an attunement, it is always with you. Even if you reject this, it says, even if you reject it and just dismiss it as foolishness and never have anything to do with it again, it's going to remain with you and you can come back to it at any time because it's there, it never goes, it doesn't leave you. It's like this thing is stuck with you, you're stuck with it. Once you've got this, you're stuck with it. And presumably the Reiki guides as well. So these are like forces that are beyond the Reiki master's control. So, just to recap, Reiki guides are present at this thing called attunements. They are called upon, prayed to, and thanked during a healing. Sometimes they are felt by those who are being healed with the, all the different hands on a person. And they are beyond the Reiki master's control. Now, a secular source here that I promised you. This is from a woman's magazine, Chat, issue 36. 6th of September, 1997, page 6. And the article is entitled, I Speak with Forked Tongue. There's a picture of the lady there. With her Reiki master. And uh, she claims that she had some beneficial experiences with Reiki. But she said there was an unusual side effect. And I'll just read to you what it says at the end of this article. One afternoon, I sat down, inhaled deeply and visualised the Reiki symbols. Then I felt heat soar through me. My body started to shake. Then this booming male voice suddenly filled the room. It sounded like a Red Indian chief from an old John Wayne movie. And you know what the scariest thing of all was? It was coming from inside me. I was speaking in a forked tongue. I tried not to, but I couldn't stop myself. Bathed in sweat, I phoned John Shango, he was the Reiki master who she had contact with, and was relieved to hear my own voice. That's wonderful, Jill, he exclaimed. You've been chosen by the Reiki healing spirits. They'll be your companions forever now. Going back to that thing again, really, before in the manual, isn't it? About these things never leaving you, this whole thing just remaining with you, even if you reject it. They'll be with you forever now. Since then, I've had 35 different ones speaking through me. There's Dr. Yushi, the Japanese man who founded Reiki. Little Flower, with her, her, her lilting voice. Chief Sitting Bull, who always sounds angry, and many more. I can talk to them. All, whenever I want, I just ask them out loud to answer me, and they always do. I feel like a very exotic telephone exchange. Now, these things are obviously living in this woman. They're using her voice. They've got possession of her voice box. They speak through her. She didn't really sign up for this, but these are the spirits that are operational through this practice Reiki it's a form of spiritualism at the end of the day it's not just a healing practice as a lot of people initially think there's much more to it than that so if you're thinking of getting interested in this thing and pursuing it you need to know that this is going to open you up to spirits contact with spirits and if, as long as you know this, you can make an informed decision. But this might not be something that you'll find out up front. I'm telling you in advance. Then you can make your own choice.